Well, it's time for our Bill Bray fill in our face off. And uh, in the red corner, Congressman Brian Bill Bray representing Carlsbad, Solana Beach, Encinitas, San Marcos area, and the Republican Party. In the blue corner, Congressman Bob Filner representing National City, Chula Vista, and El Centro all the way down to uh, the Mexican border and the Democratic Party. And Brian Bill Bray, he is making a uh, fashionably late entrance. He's trying to get in your head, Congressman Filner. How are you today? I guess. Uh... <laughs> He's going to come in right at the end and... and uh... With the uh, cleanup spot and just knock me out of the park. <laughs> That's what he's hoping, anyway. Uh, we'll get it. I'm glad. I'm glad you. Uh, we can at least talk here a little bit. Um, we talked a lot this week about jobs leaving California specifically. So we'll talk about California and also the nation at large. Same principles, but um, growth in low tax, right to work states like Texas and some others through the roof these last few years, and people are leaving California at an incredible rate. So what's what do you think the government's role is? in preventing jobs from leaving California and also leaving America? Well, clearly, I mean, this, you know, you, you got to get the state, the, uh, the the locals, the feds all involved in this together. I mean, you know, by the way, one of the biggest impediments to any rational policy, Mike, is, uh, is uh, you know, none of us work together with the other branches of government. And we ought to be doing that. Federally, by the way, you know, the, our tax policies uh, in, in, incentivize uh companies from leaving the country but in california we got to work together to streamline you know uh, the regulations make sure the business climate is uh, is 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 uh, is competitive is uh is uh not, not even competitive is uh, attractive to people here and we got to you know sit down with the business and the, and, and the political leaders and the stakeholders and say look what is it that we have to change that will allow us we don't want to give up what makes California great, you know, our clean beaches and, and, you know, and our credible environment, you know, America's finest city, as you say, for San Diego. But we got, we got to get rid of the stupid stuff and we got to do it together. Okay. Like, uh, we had the CEO of Carl's Jr. on, uh, last week and he was fantastic. And he talked about all the things that makes it difficult for him to do business here. Uh, he's thinking about moving his headquarters to Texas, but already he has stopped opening up restaurants here in California. A lot of reasons. One was, uh, we'll get your take on this one. In Texas, it takes him, uh, well, in California, it takes him about two years to get a permit to open up a restaurant. In Texas, it takes 40 days. Well, we, we need to sit down and say, what, what causes that? And just get rid of the stupid stuff. Again, we don't, got, we, wanna, we don't want to get rid of stuff that makes us better than Texas in terms of our environment, for example. But you don't want to have that kind of difference, and I'd have to. I mean, I, I if, if if I were in the state, I'd be sitting down with him and with uh, uh, and and saying, "Look, what is it? Can we can we get rid of here? What if what if he says, g- get rid of the uh, carb? We've been talking a lot about carb recently. Okay, a, tr- a trucking company comes to you and says, "Listen, these new diesel requirements uh, that you that you say helps the the environment so much, it's going to cost us eighty five thousand dollars to uh, re up all of our our entire fleet. We can't afford that. Get rid of carb. What do you say? Well, I, you know, I got to look at that. But again, uh, there are things that make us better than Texas in terms of uh, the quality of life here, and we don't want to give that up. And that's uh, there's a trade off there in the cost, and you got to look at that. What you know, you got to. This is a rational kind of thing. You could look at the cost, at the trade offs, the cost effectiveness. You know, is it one in a thousand situation or is it one in ten? Uh, you know, those kind of calculations, and. You know, d- just have the list and, and see which w- which ones are better. Now, you know, if people want to live in a in a place where they're they're going to die earlier because the environment is all choked up, well, there's a trade off there, right? Right. So you got you got to you got to make these trade offs, but you got to do them rationally, and you got to do it with a you know scientific basis, and you got to uh, do it together, both parties, uh, all levels of government, and, and do it. You know, we got some stupid regulations, but we got stuff that you don't want to get rid of, and you just got to distinguish between those two. We've done a poor job of doing that. And would you, would well, you admit, no, done... no question. Okay, good. Let's bring on a, a national level here. Um, corporate income tax, Paul Ryan's budget calls for lowering it from 35% to 25%. Uh, do you believe in lowering the corporate income tax? Rate? Well, I, 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 you know, <laughs> I read about all the giant companies, whether they're GE or Exxon or somebody, that uh, they're paying zero taxes. Now, so I, I, I don't, I can't imagine uh, at this situation where these in, where people are making incredible profits, not contributing at all to the tax base of this country, and they want them lower. Look, the problem with the Ryan budget is that he, he produces, by the way, almost zero deficit reduction. That's the whole part, I thought, of what we have to do as a country, get rid of this incredible debt. 
and yet he lowers taxes uh, to, at the same level that he's cutting spending from you know what I'll call people's programs. So if you're going to cut the spending and cut the revenue, you have zero in terms of, uh, of positive uh, payback of our debt. So that budget does almost nothing to decrease the debt of this nation. So uh, I'm, 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 he doesn't touch the defense budget where we ought to be talking about. He doesn't touch any of the tax loopholes that we ought to be dealing with. Uh, he, you know, and uh, we are at the lowest tax rates for corporations, I think, you know, in our history. We ought to. Uh, yeah, that's s- not where I would look at first for this kind of uh, improvement. Without okay, and there's two parts to this. But first, without the tax loopholes. It's 35% plus 10% on top, or 8.8% on top of that in California. You add those two together, there's no place you can be in the entire world and set up a business and pay higher tax rates. If you want to use GE as an example, they're good because they, they have a lot of lawyers. They can spend a lot of money on finding the loopholes. But Charlie's Plumbing down the road can't. And yeah, they're but Charlie's Plumbing is not on that list to get that, that, uh, that, uh, that tax reduction. It, he, it, what Ryan does is for the big guys, they don't need our help. I agree with you. The little guys need our help, and that's what we should be concentrating on. Uh, and that we could do all kinds of things there. But uh, he's not talking about reduction for Mike's plumbing. Well, are there people uh, other where people? I'm going to put you back in soon, Mike. But uh, <laughs> uh, well, I understand. Like, wh- where's the distinction between a large business, big business, corporate tax rate? Don't all businesses pay these tax rates? No, because he's he's focusing on these uh, on, the, on the big corporations. The little the little guys don't have the same ex- the, the, the same uh, corporate. St- they don't have the same uh, legal structure. They don't have the same tax rates. They have it's 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 completely different situation. And uh, if if, if uh, I told Ryan Paul Ryan that I would be we we'd help him with the the, the smaller guys. That's that's where the, the crux of all this you know, job creation has to be. But why are you going? Why are you helping the GEs of the world? You know. All right, there's a lot more going to this. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, Bob Fulner, we're going to get uh, Bill Bray on the line for the next break here so we can uh, get back to the face-off aspect of this. But appreciate you very much, uh, Congressman Fulner. And if you have a question for the Congressman, 1-800-760-KFMB, 1-800-760-5362. When these guys get back, we're going to ask this question as well. The challenge is going to be balance the budget in 30 seconds. Ready, go. That's coming up next on the Mike Slater Show. Spread the word. By Brian Bill Bray. Uh, we can't get a hold of him right now, so... Uh Bob Filner, he showed up right here on time to discuss the issues. Congressman Filner, appreciate you. On time here. and under budget. <laughs> Unlike our federal government. Uh, I want right. to talk more about this corporate income tax. I, I don't understand why we tax businesses anything extra, right? I, isn't, it, isn't a business just a collection of people who we're already taxing? Why do, we, uh, why do we treat a business as if it's a separate, living, breathing entity that needs its own tax? Actually, that's what the Supreme Court has just ruled, that they are separate breathing entities. Look, corporations have all kinds of legal uh, protections and uh, differences from individuals. I mean, they are a completely separate legal uh, structure, and they get benefits from corporate uh, from their corporations at their, their legal status. And you have to treat them differently. So, uh, uh, you know, and look, uh, Mike, when, when, a, when a company is making $50 billion a year in profits, mm-hmm. And but again, the company is doing this in our, in our, you know, in the, in the greatest nation as you, in the world. L- they ought to contribute to what the situa- to, to our uh, to our situation here. Right, our there's, there's so many are, things going on. You know, they, they they get police protection, they get fire protection, and they get uh, roads built, and they get I mean all kinds right of government. Uh, they're not on their own here. They're part of a, a, a whole structure, and they got to contribute to the uh, to, to to the uh, to the maintenance and upkeep of that structure. I would say. The company doesn't make fifty billion dollars. Yes, the, the people in the company make no, the, the company shareholders. They have a separate legal structure, uh, Mike, and, and 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 that's in addition to what the people are, their salaries and everything else. This is the corporate profit as a as an who, entity. Who walks away with that money? The shareholders, the the board of directors, the the owners, the people who work at the company. Like this, the, you know what I mean? Like these people already get the money. Then you tax their income. Of the money that they've earned, so you still get yours, right? Look, the corporation has a completely—you uh, uh, know—we set up corporations to, pr- to, uh, to as a way to, uh, you know, for uh, to, to, so personal liability is not at stake. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this kind of thing. So it's a completely separate entity. It's not like a little business or a family. It's a—it's a—it's a, it's a, it's a legal structure that's protected by law, 
and, uh, and, and has all kinds of rights, and, and therefore they should have some responsibilities too. Okay, you talk about how they don't, uh, just, and this is kind of brought into a broader topic, about how corporations aren't contributing they don't, they, or they need to contribute their fair share. I would argue that they're contributing to society by providing a product or a service that clearly is benefiting us all. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making a $50 billion profit. Sure. I mean, I have no... So, yeah, so why no tax them on top of that? I don't understand why we're punishing them for doing well. We're not punishing anybody. We're, we're, they have all kinds of legal rights, protections, and support from government at all levels. And it's part of their responsibility to help pay for that. That's all. <laughs> okay, but I, 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 okay, if you... What, I, I, just, I don't understand why you think you can tax... I still don't understand why you think... They deserve an extra tax on top it's of all the people there. Tax. Of course, it's it is. A it's, tax a, on it's a tax that you've created on these thing, on this thing, as opposed to a tax on the people who work there, which is already a tax. And you got the property taxes on top of what they're already paying, and not to mention again, because income tax. they have all kinds of legal legal protections as a corporation. They have all kinds of government help as a corporation. So they are separate. They are not like a little family here that you're taxing twice. It's a it's a separate entity that gets all kinds of benefits from being a corporate structure. And therefore, they're treated differently in the tax code. All right. Uh, debt reduction. Uh, you talked to, you don't think Congressman uh, Paul Ryan's budget does quite enough for that? Uh, I'm what, sorry? You, you don't think Congressman uh, Ryan's budget does enough for that? What would you say? Uh, how, how would you start to uh, get rid of this debt? Well, first of all, you know, as uh, Al Capone said uh, when he was asked, uh, why do you rob banks? And he said, that's where the money is. Ryan and the Republicans have taken off the table completely the defense budget. And they're, they're talking about billions and uh, tens of billions. I could solve the debt issue by getting us out of Afghanistan and Iraq. Because we're talking about trillions there. How, so how much do you think? Let's go how much where the money think? is. Give us a number. How much, how, much do you think we spend? how much do you think we spend in Afghanistan and, and Iraq? There is, uh, the, the war is going to cost us be, at least be, between 5 and $7 trillion dollars over the next uh, decade. So is that money that we've already spent two and plus the next decade? Yeah. Okay, so that's, let's say it's five trillion. Let's double it, 10 trillion. Right. Social Security has an unfunded liability of 18 trillion. So you're halfway there wait, for wait, Social wait, Security. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I don't know where you're getting your money. Social Security has nothing to do with the debt. It's a completely uh, a separate item. It does not, con- you know, the, the, that is self-funded and is completely self-funded, uh, and is completely uh, solvent until 2042. Okay, you're right. So let's, let's let's totally worry about that when we're completely broke in 2042, Congressman. Don't you, don't you think we should start? Uh, well, I know we talked. Yeah, but Social Security is a diff- a whole different item. It's, it's funded by uh, you know contributions uh, that uh, people make. It, it's not it's not part of the debt crisis. Uh, the uh, other items, you know, the other so-called entitlements are, but we've got to deal with them, no question. But and, and everybody wants to deal with it, but you can't take off. First of all, you can't not you take the biggest item in the budget is defense, and you can't take that off the table and say you're going to solve the, the, the debt issue. And you cannot uh, uh, then, you know, lower taxes on, on the, the wealthiest and say that, 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 therefore, you know, we have to make that up with cuts to people, uh, you know, who are on a safety net in this country. So what you're doing, I mean, he's not solving that issue at all. He's completely changing what the nature of government is, but uh, he, he does nothing. The Ryan budget does nothing for the debt, to, we, cre- to, to decrease the debt, nothing. You say Social Security is, uh, you know, different, funded by, you know, contributions, whatever. Uh, Medicare, but you brought you said Medicare is different. That's significantly, we're many times more of an unfunded liability than sure. Social Security. Then we got to deal with it. Buy. You don't you don't privatize it and take away the you know the ability of uh, of seniors to pay for their uh, for their medical care. I mean, there are lots of ways to deal with it, but privatization is the worst. You don't like the uh, idea of the block grant. Well, no, because what you're doing is, is is you're depriving people who need medical care from getting the medical care. Depriving them? That's what them? you're doing. How are you depriving them of it by giving the money to California to dole out how they want to dole it out? Because they will, they they, they will, uh, you know, raise the eligibility. They will decrease the amount of benefits and the amount of. Uh, be, you're, you're not. You're, you're decreasing the amount of money that's given to the to, to those programs. That's what you're doing. If so, if, 
How so? So if, let's say it's, uh, D.C. decides that California last year they got $10 billion for Medicare. So this year they're going to give them $10 billion. How's that? How's that less money? Is that, and, and, and that, let's start from square one. How, well, how that, do you that, define block grants? That's not less money, but that's not what a block grant thing yeah, would d- do. It define would, block it grants. It would decrease it significantly. Really? Well, okay. I mean, how, how, how are they going to? How, how do they save money unless by decreasing it? Because it would be run more efficiently and effectively well, on a local level than a, than from DC. Do you not think that that's usually the case? That things run well, on a more local level. I don't know about that. Medicare has a has a has a like a three percent overhead uh, rate compared to uh, all these private insurance companies that have fifteen twenty percent overhead. So I mean, I don't, I don't know where you're. I mean. Medicare is run pretty efficiently. Also, private insurance companies also have a uh, profit uh, margin of only three percent too. So they're not. Exactly oh come on, Mike. They do. They probably have a profit the margin of three percent. The, the the health insurance companies are the big some of the biggest profit makers and get the biggest uh, individual uh, pay uh, compensation of anybody in this country. Uh, they have a profit margin of three point. I believe it's three point eight percent. That that that's not true. <laughs> and. Uh, and everybody who pays medical uh, insurance knows, you know, knows that. Let's go to uh, Bob in uh, San Diego. Good morning, Bob. You're on the phone with Congressman Bob Filner. Yeah, I just wanted to ask the congressman one question. Um, it, you know, unemployment right now is more like 18 percent in this country, not the 8.9 that the administration wants us to think it is. So you don't think that the Ryan proposal, if we put half of those people back to work, you don't honestly think that that would have an effect on the deficit? To have sure, that many more ca- how is he going to put all those people to work? He doesn't do anything for that for for jobs. By, by lessening the restrictions and by res- all, all of the all of the the restrictions on all the businesses, it's going to put a lot of people. I'm a business owner. I know the Carl's Jr. guy. All these people who don't want to yep. start businesses anymore. That's but what the Ryan budget about. has nothing to do with that. It doesn't do anything about that. Well, I don't agree with that. Well, I think uh, tell me, tell me what it taxes, does to help you. When, when you lessen the taxes on the wealthy, those are job cre- those people create jobs. Those are the big business owners. That, that's how you create jobs. Bob, I appreciate know, that. But how do does not, it help you as a small business owner? Do you not do you not agree with that, Congressman? That that the rich, the wealthy people are job creators. Well, if they were, we would have we wouldn't be having the employment problem that we have today. Look, they have the lowest tax rate and the highest profits they've ever had, and we still have, as the, the gentleman just said, eighteen percent employment. So, where what, what are they doing? They got trillions of dollars in their in, in their in their uh, in their uh, cash uh, backup. Who's creating? They're not creating the jobs. Why do we have the unemployment that we have? So who should be creating the jobs? The poor people? The people on welfare? No, but I'm saying you're telling me the rich people are creating jobs. They have the they have the most money they've ever had in the history, and we're and they're not creating a job. Every single job that there is to now is created by a rich person. Every single job, everyone going to work right now is working for a rich person. There's no other way around it. That's I work for a rich person. Look, most jobs are created by hardworking small business owners. They're not rich. By we the president's definition, they are. You ought to be helping small business. And and people like the guy who just called are struggling to get along. We're, you know, they're not the ones that are being helped by this Ryan budget. You don't think getting out of the government, getting out of the way, is helping small businesses? Yeah, at certain in certain respects, yeah. But that's not what they're, the Republicans are doing. They're not getting government out of the way for for those people. They're just they're they're going after the wealthiest one percent who who control now uh, you know fifty or sixty percent of the wealth of this nation. And I don't see them helping us. Uh, those of us at the bottom. This is a trickle-down theory that has never worked. And I'm tired, Mike, of being trickled on. We, that is, <laughs> you, we're, we're and got, you help the the big guys, and it trickles down to the rest of us. It does it does not work. Con- what we ought to be doing is stimulating the economy from the bottom. Congressman, we've got uh, 30 seconds here. You have 30 seconds to balance the debt. Go. Or get rid of the debt. Who, you talking to me? Yeah, you're wasting your time. You just wasted five seconds, Congressman. Get us out of Afghanistan and Iraq, and we'll balance the budget. <laughs> That's it. That's all we got to do. That's all we got to do. <laughs> Congressman Filner, appreciate your time very much. Where can uh, people get in contact with you? Just call my office anytime. Do you have a number offhand by any chance? I have a local number at 619-422-5963. All right. We will uh, put that on the website. And uh, I think without a doubt, you, quote unquote, won this round of the Bill Damn Bill right. Faceoff. <laughs> I think un- undisputed uh, champion of this round. Uh, <laughs> Congressman, appreciate you very much. Give my best to your team.